Hey, this is Paul Payton with Focal Splash, and uh, today we've got this challenge that uh, I put out uh, where we would uh, take this little girl here, and with this sheep, and this uh, rabbit, and this rabbit, and these flowers, and put them into this background. That was the challenge, that was uh, an edit that somebody uh, did, and... I offered to show them what I would do, and then I created a challenge, and lots of people uh, did the same thing. So I just wanted to take a video of of my attempt at uh, at this, and uh, to do color matching and composition and contrast matching and exposure and all that stuff. So the first thing I would do is grab the quick select tool. Even in this situation, with this color dresses that are the same to begin with, and of course it grabbed all that but we'll just use the alt key and we will deselect what we don't want reselecting this part and we're going to go into select and mask so this is just the preliminary selection anyway so there we have that get rid of this over here just go ahead and Deselect that, deselect this, something like that. And there's a little bit more of her dress here. We'll go ahead and select that. And select her arm. And I think that's enough for now. So we're going to hit select and mask. Get rid of everything but her. You notice uh, here, I don't think if you can see it, but these little lines happen when you use the quick select tool where you select it and deselect it and it, it decided that it didn't want to deselect that. So with the quick select tool again inside the select and mask, I hit the alt key and just go over that. Should get rid of it. And it did. So I'll get rid of that line. All right, that looks good. Now, you know, we have this hand here. We're just going to figure something out there <laughs> and let's just see what happens if we um, we're not going to bring the other hand in actually we're going to turn this into part of her dress and probably just get rid of this right here Oops, see get rid of this right here like that yeah make that look like it's part of her dress there we'll do the same thing here just give a little bit of extra there and we'll fix their or fix her arm there. All right, here I'm going to hit the R for the refine edge tool, and see what it gives me. Sometimes it'll it'll do a good job of selecting out here, and other times it really just depends on what's in the background. So we're not going to get a perfect selection on her hair, but we could get a real nice one. We just get some of those flyaways there. Like that. Okay, so we have some of that hair there. That looks pretty good. Did something strange right here, so we're gonna hit, hit B for the brush tool and just paint that in, selecting that. All right, let's look here, and that's how our dress looks. But I'd rather have it look like this. <laughs> yeah, if it looks right, it is right. I say that a lot. Uh, in Photoshop, it doesn't need to be exactly right, or you know, because that part wasn't part of her dress, right? But it doesn't have to be uh, part of her dress as long as it looks like it's part of her dress. All right, and so with the B brush tool, I'm going to hold Alt and get rid of this, and get rid of some of this, and add that right there again. And as far as this shoe is concerned we'll probably be covering it up with grass so we'll see what happens there all right so as far as the little girl being selected out i think holding alt here and getting rid of this line i think that's a pretty good selection there's something over here all right there we have it so we're going to put it up on a new layer with a layer mask just like that and there she is and that's a pretty good cutout, I think. I'm going to use the white brush. You can change it to white by holding, the, typing the X key. And I'm just going to paint in this right here. This doesn't need to be invisible. This looks like, you know, 
So it's real important to get a good selection and a good mask to start with. That's a pretty important. So we have one on her. I think I like that. Let's go ahead and go to the lamb. I'm thinking we're pretty much stuck with the selection that we have with this lamb. We may be able to, holding down command, clicking on the layer here, that makes a selection out of the layer. And then creating a layer mask with that selection just by clicking the layer mask. You see there's the selection. Double clicking on that will bring you into select and mask. And then pressing the R, making the brush about the right size. Let's see if we can't, you know, maybe feather this, uh, this pretty rough selection here. Refine that edge. It's supposed to be fuzzy. So this tool should help it look a little fuzzy instead of stark cut out like that. And you might be able to tell that it seems to be doing its job. Just go around here and make that fuzzy edge fuzzy. Alright, and if you see me do something, you're like, oh, I wish he wouldn't have done that. I wish he would have done it a different way. There's a, a better way to do this. Put a little comment. Let me know. Don't leave me hanging, you know? Let me know what I'm doing wrong, because I am learning all the time also from you guys. All right, so there we go. Same thing. Up on a new layer. I like that. Look at the bunny. This bunny's a little blurry. We're going to make them nice and small. Holding down Command, clicking on the layer, creating a layer mask, and double-clicking on it brings you into Selected Mask. Same thing with the uh, Refine Edge tool. All right, got him refined. Hold down Command and click on the layer. It makes a selection. Go to Layer Mask here. It creates a layer mask with that with whatever selected. And then if you have a Lasso tool or the Quick Select tool or whatever selected here, you'll see Selected Mask up here. That's just like double clicking on that on the layer. So here we are in Selected Mask. And with the Refine Edge tool, I'm going to just go ahead and go around him. See if I can't get a little bit, you know, if it doesn't work out because of the type of edge that's on the selection that you're making, you know, sometimes it, that doesn't look good, you know, just, uh, I'm going on the outside edge, just barely touching the, the, um, the fur here. Not on, I'm not in here making, you know, making it like that. You know, that would be a real mess. Um, even this doesn't look that great. So, again, there, we have that bunny. I think he's ready. These guys are all pretty much selected out. Not much you can do with this uh, um, inside making another selection. And here we have the background. All right, on the background... Uh, the first thing I want to do is use the clone stamp tool. Alright, and I'm just going to clone stamp from right here. Right there. And get rid of, get rid of that. Okay. And clone stamp again from over here. Just paint like that. And I'm just going to paint over this. Don't even know what that thing is. I had a lot of people comment on that. What is that? Who knows? I don't know what it is. All right, but it was distracting, and so now it's gone. All right, and it's a copy of this right to there, but I don't think you'll notice that unless you're really looking for uh, Photoshop things. All right, the next thing I don't want to do is I'm going to try something. I'm going to try and stretch this out this way with the content aware crop and just hit it and see what happens very nice sometimes a uh, photoshop will just surprise you all right and so i'm going to hit the clone stamp tool i'm just going to zoom in this background doesn't have a lot going for it uh it's very pixelated and it's not very big it was part of the challenge so grab here i'm going to clone stamp this Yay, art. <laughs> yeah, it's like, 
you just did what? Yeah, I just painted it over there. All right, hold down the Alt key here. I'm going to clone stamp that out. Don't know what that is. Don't really think it needs to be part of the picture. We have half a tree here. What, oh, what are we going to do about that? Hmm. I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm going to clone stamp right here and just put some bushes and over the top of that top of that tree and uh, I'm gonna pretend like there's a bush here and maybe even over the top of that part right there all right I think that's simply put a complex background it's pretty small anyway you may not even notice it um, looking pretty good all right so I'm gonna zoom in again I, I I like to hold the Z key down to zoom in but if you hold the space bar and then command you can zoom in and the space bar by itself lets you move it but the space bar and command right next to it lets you zoom and that that method zooms in other places where the Z key doesn't work so that's why it's important okay I'm gonna grab this right here and just put them right here that's an interesting way to handle that, isn't it? Inside here, I'm just going to get rid of that. It looks like a duplicate thing. And down here, I'm going to get rid of that so it doesn't look like it's duplicated. That's good. I'm going to get rid of this dot right here. And I think that doesn't look like it's duplicated anymore. I'm going to grab this spot here and put a top on that, on that post. And then remove this bump here and remove this lines there. Um, let's go like this. I think that's next to invisible. So I think that did it. All right. It still looks a little funny over here, but probably nobody will notice. So. And there we have that. We can fix any of that if we want to in the future. Um, so I'm going to grab here with the clone stamp tool and just clone that over like so. Grabbing here. Grabbing here. I keep hitting a button accidentally. And grabbing some grass just like that. Let's see if that worked. Looks like it worked to me. So the background is pretty much prepared uh, for now. And now I'm going to go and get the, the little girl, the most important aspect of the composite, the lamb. No, the little girl. All right, so I'm going to grab her with the move tool. That's V for the move tool. And I'm going to pick her up and bring her over and put her in right on top of here. Why? Because <laughs> this gets difficult. You want to put her in there, but you can't reach it. So, you know, um, one of the ways is to grab that this layer and move it over so you can so you can see it. So now that it's there, this is the layer we want to put her in and we've got her in there. See how small that background is compared to her? Wow. All right. So I hit control T and I lock the uh, height and width together and then just change the height here and it'll change the width too. I do that when I can't get to the edge. All right, let's see how big we want her to be. I'm always looking to put the main subject possibly at a, the rule of thirds um, if we can. Well, you know, we're not going to put her in the middle, uh, but if we put her at the rule of thirds, I'll just hit enter on that and hit C. It's the um, crop tool. And you can see the lines when you use the crop tool. So she's close to the rule of thirds. She can be over even a little bit more. Um, it's really is, it really is effective, the rule of thirds. Uh, go back to the move tool by hitting V and just move her over a little bit. And she's still a little big for me. 
So I think I like that. All right. So we have her as a good cutout. We have her placed in a in a good spot in the composition. Um, what we what we have here is she looks like she's floating above the ground. So at this point, someone might put shadows down, and that would make her look like she was sitting on the ground. Uh, but in this situation, we have a kind of an issue, and that is that's not the way it would look. She wouldn't have shadows under here sitting on the ground. What she would have, and she might have, to, might have some under her dress right here, but definitely her feet would be covered by the, by the grass and such. So on this layer, I'm going to hit the W, which will give me the quick select tool. And I'm on this layer, and I have sample all layers turned off. So I'm really just going to sample this layer here. And I'm just going to grab some spots that would be over her here and you know make sure I don't get too much I won't be needing that right like that that should work and hit control J and move this above her oh look at that fully covered well and that's not what I wanted either right so I'm gonna hit control and click on this make the selection again and make a layer mask and I'm going to double click on the layer mask to get into select and mask. Use the refine edge tool and just run over this and see what we get with this tool. We're just trying to make some of the grass invisible and some not, you know, just like it would be. You'd be able to see through some of it. Let's see what happens with that. Hit new OK. And then I'm going to hit. Um, the V for the move tool and just drag it down. I do want to see part of her feet here May be believable Believable Like that I'm thinking Yeah, maybe something like that hitting enter brush tool at 20% painting with black I hit X to change it to black and um I hit 2 to change it to 20%. You can hit 5 for 50, 2 for 20. And just painting right here. I'm on black and I'm on the layer mask. So, and I'm on the brush tool. So painting right here should do something. Oh, couldn't do anything right there because that's in between her feet. So, just take some of that off this foot here. Some of that off of there put some more on here I'm at a hundred percent going back to 20 and taking some of this off just make it a little transparent all right so far I think she's looking more like she's on the ground and below her I'm gonna create a layer and I'm simply gonna paint with this color right here it's not truly black more of a brownish and I'm just gonna paint on top of her no below her thank you and I'm gonna just paint like this right there under the dress where there would be some shadow and the dress is height you know it's hard to determine there would be some shadow there for sure and down in here possibly where you can see the edges of her her feet all right and then i'm going to change the opacity down so that you know there's just some shadow there all right um, i see with that i can always change the opacity of that later and such the like okay so here we have we're going to be on her layer. I'm going to hit control J to make a new copy, keep a copy of her. And then I'm going to go up here to image and adjustments. And this is a cheat uh, color match, right? This is the uh, photo that we're, we're using. So the source is going to be, um, that is the layer that we want to color match her to at no more than 50%. We don't want her to be you know green like the, the trees and we don't want her to be the color she was so uh, maybe 75% which is the number I find to be 
pretty good a lot of times. So she's matching the color of the scene better. So the light that is in the scene is shining on her. So then we just going to create a curves adjustment layer. And here's something, again, a little trick. I need to share this with you guys. Um, here's an action that I made based on Flurin's action. And just run this action real quick, and it makes a test group. All right. So inside this test group, I have something called set black and white. It's a uh, threshold layer. And with that layer, what I do is I come down and I look at the black in the image. So here's the black points in the image. We have something here that's starting to be black. Right? We have this that's starting to be black, but she's not showing up black yet. Okay. But she's not showing up black yet. So we just keep moving and moving until she shows up. There are her eyes. You see her eyes and her mouth there have a little bit of black. That's 33 points up from uh, about two, you know, when other stuff starts to show up black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 30 points. She needs to be, her, the color, her color needs to be brought up 30 points. So let's just see what happens if we start bringing up her color to... To 30. Let's just test it and see if the, the theory is right. All right, so here we have the threshold. All right, so there we have at the bottom. Okay, wait, sorry about that. We need to clip this curves adjustment layer to her. You can click on the curves adjustment layer right above her and click that. And then the, the adjustment that we made will only affect her. All right, and so then back to the test layer. And let's just go out here, and we see at about two, you see her eyes. At zero, at one, you see her eye. So maybe 30 is a little too high. But um, you see her eyes, you see everything else coming in black, and she matches the darkness there. Well, let's just look at the lightness. we got to remember to bring the darkness up a little bit on her. Um, but look, look at white. See what comes up white first. See all the stuff around her is showing up. Uh, white before she is. Now her dress is pretty yellow, you know, it's a pretty bright color. So she doesn't start showing up here until right there. And that's just, that's just part of her dress. So let's go to, I think she starts showing up right here. And we see that's 200. All right. So that's 55 points down. All right. So I don't think we're going to go all 55 points. But we can take this and go ahead and bring it down, you know, maybe 50 points or 40 points, something like that. All right. And we'll go back up to the test layer. You know, we could do all this and without even seeing the colors and everything. And so she shows up almost immediately right along with everything else. Now, with all that said, when we turn this layer off, we should be able to see that she matches the contrast pretty good in the scene. If not, then I'm just crazy lunatic. All right, so ready? Bang. All right, so her contrast levels. She looks a little dark to me. Remember we said that, that she's going to be a few points too dark. Uh, so we have, you know, her hair color. You know, I think her hair color could be matching this darkness level here. It doesn't have to match, you know, black over there. And to me, um, her coloring is just a little dark. So we'll go down here, go back to this, and we have just bring her all the way. See, that's too too bright. Just bring her back just a couple of points there. And her overall midtones seem to be a little. Um, um, dark so I'm just gonna bring her up just a little bit like that so her her highlights are set right and her uh, shadows are set right and now her midtones are, are matching the scene pretty good all right I think just me but I think that's pretty good okay there's something else here 
the way the lighting is working, we want to add a little light to her. So I'm going to put up a, <clears throat> a new layer. I'm going to change it to soft light. Paint with uh, with gray. I use shift delete. See that brings up the fill dialog, which uh, there we go, fill. All right, so that's shift F5 will get you to the fill dialog. Uh, so we'll shift delete. So I use shift delete. All right, that gets me fill with the foreground, the background color, fill with a pattern, content aware, uh, black, gray. I'm going to fill, it can't content aware because there's nothing on the layer, but I'm going to fill with 50% gray. All right, and 50% gray on a soft white layer, soft light layer is nothing. It doesn't do anything to it. 50% uh, gray, gray is don't affect it at all. So I'm going to hit D and it's going to bring the default colors back and then hit X, I'm going to be painting in white with the brush tool. Okay, add about 20%. So I'm just going to tap right here. Just add a little bit of light to the dark shadows on her face. And I'm going to tap right there. A couple more times on her forehead. A couple of times at the tops of her cheek here. This is uh, pretty lighting for a little girl something like that just real simply uh, there's people who will show you all kinds of dodge and burn techniques um, I'm gonna make a clipping mask by holding alt and clicking right in between here and it's gonna clip it just to her and so we know that there's some light coming from behind her so I'm also going to since I made a clipping mask I can paint out here and nothing happens but I'm gonna paint on her edges right here right just on her edge I'm only painting at 20%, so I could paint at 100%. Just get down the edge here. Little bitty edges of her hair, not too much. Just to make a little bit of sunshine wrapping around her. And right on the edge here. Alright, right down the edge here. We still need to fix her elbow. To do that, I'm going to put a another layer right above her and use the uh, clone stamp tool click on her arm and click right here on her arm can't zoom in too much pretty pixelated and just that's not working at all so clone stamp tool clicking on her arm here and it's not working why because oh I'm so silly um, because I can't add something to her arm if I'm using a clipping mask, which prevents me from painting outside of her arm. So just undo that a couple times, move this above, holding alt to disengage that clipping mask using the clone stamp tool right here. So you get to see me make mistakes too, which is kind of cool. I think, I think I learned from my mistakes. And maybe you can learn from your mistakes too. Oh, from my mistakes too. <laughs> Alright, so clicking right here with the healing brush. The healing brush blends things in. So once I've painted in the uh, uh, the right color and texture there, I can use the healing brush and kind of blend it. That looks pretty good to me. Looks like it would be her arm there. And, and we have this piece of a finger right here which you can't even tell just going to use the healing brush and blend that in same thing over here we have um, use the clone stamp tool we have that the glove and of course I'm zoomed in just a little too much there I like it like that clone stamp tool select here we don't need that dark color either I'm just going to put her elbow back Yeah, and like I said, there's not a whole lot of pixels healer here to deal with. So there's that. And then J key is just gonna blend in the texture here. Makes it nice and smooth. Makes it look like hey, there was never any thumb in there anyway. Alright, so that's what I would do with her. And of course, you know, we don't have to be done with her. We can come back later. So the next thing I want to do is grab the 
the sheep, the lamb, V for the move tool, drag it over here, and plop them right down here. Um, there, look at that, and that's cool. Uh, control T, and we'll make them smaller. We'll choose that and bring it down like that, and then we can use the shift key. Actually, since I have that selected, it's going to be locked anyway. So you don't want to deform stuff. And a couple of people had the same idea I had, so don't think that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing the idea from you. Uh, how big should the sheep be? Well, its feet have to be there, and its head could be sticking out. Its head's not sticking out that far. I really do want it about like that. And maybe that'll work. So, with the with that, I don't want to change the um, layer mask of the sheep here. So what I do is I hit Control G. That makes a group. I'll hit en Enter first. Control G makes a group, and then put a layer mask on that group. And then, with a black brush, I can paint away the sheep without messing with the sheep's real layer mask. So this is a layer mask where the sheep is interacting with the current environment, not a layer mask removing the old environment. So I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. I don't know. So let's uh, hit X and paint the sheep back in. I'm going to paint the sheep in over that. I don't know. I can't do that. So like that. And then the sheep's foot has to be behind right can't be in front of that I made the brush smaller you can change the softness of the brush um, just by making the brush bigger or smaller as well as actually changing the softness of the brush by holding down the alt and cold control keys on windows it's slightly different you'll have to figure out what that is if you hold the alt and control keys and move click you know tap and move the brush this way it changes size and up and down changes hardness. So I really like to play with the hardness at zero quite a bit and I only change it when I need to. So still painting with black. Let's see, what did I do wrong there? Do I really want that foot showing? I think I need that foot showing. So control Z and we're gonna paint with black um, right here. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work. And we're going to paint right here and zoom in. I can't zoom in too much. Make the brush a little smaller. Painting with white. I'll put the sheet back on that edge there. All right, painting with black. Yeah, how is that sheep's foot going to be on this side of the fence, right? Hmm. I think we're going to have to make some adjustments, aren't we? Okay, so... I don't know what's going on here, so I'm going to paint with white. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to pretend that that looks right. Painting with black. Something like that. And there. There's still some grass here, so painting with white again, putting the sheet back, something like that. All right, now with this being in a group, if I select this right here and V with the move tool, I can move that lamb and the layer mask that's there will still be there. So it'll make it easier if I need to just move the lamb down a little bit. Up over, you know, the lamb's feet have to be on that side of the fence. His head sticking on this side. I'm actually going to just fix that um, lamb's foot here in a second. So, Control Z. I'm going to hit, yeah, Control Z in case I moved him. Actually, I did like him down a little bit, so there we go. Put him like that. And put uh, this foot. So, I'm going to grab this lamb right here. I'm going to create, I'm going to make a selection just like that on this layer and hit control J. 
Now let's put this lamb's foot up on another layer. So if I go to the layer mask here and ruin it with this um, X painting with black, ruin that layer mask and then take this foot and with the move tool, move it back a little bit, control T, put it like this and something like, like, something like that, make it look like it's on the other side of the fence. All right, that's good enough for me. And if somebody notices that, then they're looking too close. <laughs> so, all right, so that's what I would do there. Uh, zooming in, let's check the uh, lighting on the lamp on the sheep with this. All right, so we're going to uh, click right here and threshold so the lamps eyes are pretty dark and let's check the whiteness and here we have there's some yellow her dress is pretty bright should the lamb be pretty bright the top of his head there is coming in pretty bright before the white on the thing so i think the brightness i think he's fine as far as highlights and shadows but I'm going to bring his brightness up a little bit. So above the layer of the lamb, right here and above this group, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and clip it to the group so it doesn't affect uh, anything but that, but what's in the group. And then just bring the brightness up a little bit here shine on lammy all right something like that maybe like that okay all right matching the little girl matching the scene pretty good let's check his coloring um, his coloring looks a little red to me so clicking in this group clicking on the lamb i'm going to create a new layer just to keep him the way he is in case I don't like the color change later. Go to Image, Adjustments, Color Match. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the layer we're supposed to color match him to, which is the April 1 layer. And go down to the bottom, which is the, that's the way we want. So now he's nice and green. Like I said before, normally I choose 50% right up front. And he's looking pretty good matching the scene there. You know, he's going to have green reflecting on him from the ground but again 70 percent uh fade on that looks pretty good to me i'm gonna hit okay i like it all right so next next we have i'm gonna just close this um so we don't really need him and i'm gonna close this don't need her and here's the little bunny Oh, the cutie. Just grab, bring it up here, and find the layer we want to put the bunny on. Control T. We're going to change the... Okay, I will have the shift key down, but sometimes it disobeys. Uh, we don't want to mush the bunny, right? And I'm liking this bunny. Nice and big. A nice big bunny. Too big, but you know, big bunnies are cool. All right. I'm going to mush this bunny right up next to her. All right. We need to do the same thing with the bunny. Be real easy with the bunny to put a little bit of grass over the bunny. I like it. Would there be any shadow under the bunny? Uh, yes, sir, there would be. I'm going to grab the bunny. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to bring it out of the out of the group for the sheep um, and out above <laughs> that. 
and turn off the false. There we go. So um, there's the bunny. And I want to put a little bit of shade, shadow underneath the bunny. So right there. And painting with this color here. Alt. Something like that. A little smaller. Put a little, put a little shadow there. That's amazing. That's not what I want. Control Z. Um, I mean, that should be what I want. Just a little bit of shadow under the bunny, wherever we can find it. And Control. Or I'm sorry. Going to opacity. Lower that. Lower that. Just something so that the bunny looks like it's casting some shadow there. We didn't cast any shadow with the lamb or ham or hide the lamb's foot here. So back to the lamb. The group, the layer mask right here, painting with black at about 50% opacity, and just put a little bit of uh, grass right there. Painting with white at about 20% opacity. Take some of that off, you know. And then back to black. Put some of that back on right at the bottom. I think just hiding that a little bit will make it nice. This already looks like it's hidden. Doesn't even look like his foot. All right, so there. Okay, boy, getting long. But uh, I'll cut some of it out anyway. You may not even hear me say that I was going to cut some of it out. So... Do I like that bunny? Man, I think that bunny was easy. Too easy. So let's grab the bunny. Uh, let's grab a layer, uh, create a curves adjustment layer right above the bunny. Bring down the highlights of that bunny. Make sure we clip it to the bunny. Because the bunny's white there. It's just a little too white. Something like that. I think matches the scene a little better and then of course let's click on the bunny hit control J turn off the layer that we we created from go to image this isn't what I do in every composite but there's a lot of green in this image and clicking here and clicking here and the bunny's all green now well 50 percent he's still too green let's put it at 70 like the sheep, like the lamb there. I think he's matching really good. So here we go. All right, next. We'll go ahead and close this one. And we'll go ahead and go to this bunny. He's a little dark. We're going to put a curves adjustment layer. You can use levels too. It's just a preference. I like curves. And his highlights and shadows look pretty good. Um, his highlights are too bright maybe. So do that and then bring down his highlights a little bit. I'll make them a little more gray. Maybe bring in his darks. Give him a little more contrast. And something like that might work. All right. So now we have him taken care of. Or her, I apologize. <laughs> and we're going to have these flowers here. Yay, and I remember putting this little girl here. We're just going to click on that and hit delete. Well, she's not part of this image. And with the, the move tool, we're going to move the flowers right over here all right um, I'm gonna hit uh, filter and convert for smart filters that's gonna make it a smart uh, layer is that what it's called smart object and when you hit control T on a smart object it will adjust the size of it but it won't hurt the number of pixels that are in it it's a little complex but the smart object is saved so if I were to take I'll just show you that real quick 
if I didn't have him uh, and I and I leave it like that and then I go back to control T and I and I blow it up again the pixels are gonna stay the same all right because it's a smart object but if I do that with this bunny this one remember this bunny was pretty big and let's go down to the bunny remembering that he was pretty big when he came in if we blow him back up after shrinking him you can see uh, he gets really blurry really pixelated um, and so that's why you want to use a smart object if you think you're ever gonna blow something back up uh, there's other ways reasons to use a smart object so you can apply filters to it and things and it's non-destructive but a smart object takes more memory and things like that to work with so there's that there's an issue here with the fringing you see that that fringing so I'm gonna hit control alt I'm gonna command alt and then Z Z Z right what I'm gonna do is double click on this this is the inside the smart object now so changes I make in here will will affect every time a smart object a smart object is used and I'm going to um, command click and create and double click and I want to get rid of this fringing out here it wasn't a very good cutout so I'm going to choose the quick select tool and hold the alt key down and see how that works and sometimes that'll work pretty good and just to get rid of some of it as a start okay like that and then bring in this quite a bit and we'll cut 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 into it we'll feather a little bit more and maybe a little contrast not that much some radius there we go feathering a little bit less we still have some here I don't want any of that white fringe so I'm gonna with the refine edge tool we'll see if that helps and just right in here perfect through here it's doing a really good job of refining this edge it's not only for hair folks and that did a little too good a job so we'll leave that just bring right along the edge here if you dig into it then you'll mess it up just right along the edge you want them to refine and I like that all right that'll get rid of that white fringe that we were seeing that when you shrink it down becomes a real pixel problem okay like that and then we just close this and save it and you can see that white fringe is gone magically now there's a dark fringe but control T and we'll shrink it down I think I'm just gonna go like this and put it on the side of her hair like that I like that better wearing it like a hat just wasn't really working for me all right and then click on this and we're gonna warp it just a little bit something like that all right of course things don't just rest in the air so we're gonna create a group I mean create a layer underneath it and I'm gonna paint with with uh, the darkest hair color I can find there we go holding alt and the paint holding alt clicking here it's almost black but and I'm gonna paint underneath at 100% just paint underneath that right there because it would be casting a bit of a shadow right there and reduce the opacity until I like it and I think I like that that's 79 percent all right so there we have that put a little flowers in her hair some of the uh, people put flowers all over the place and it was lovely 
Um, but I think I'm done. Um, lastly, what I like to do is to see if there's any test group things on and there's not, is to control, I'm sorry, command alt shift E, create a new layer from the whole thing, and then treat it like it's a photograph. Go to Adobe Camera Raw. So if this was a picture that was taken, somebody just took this picture. What a lucky picture to take, because how are you going to get all these animals to be looking at you and the little girl to be looking at you at the same time and not at one of the animals? I mean, woof, what a lucky shot. All right, and then, so then we just going to auto and see what it thinks. It thinks that uh, the whole thing is a little too warm uh, and a little too green. So I'm going to bring it back and make it a little more green. And I like things a little warm, so I'm going to tell it not so cold as you had it. And then hit auto on that. It usually brightens it up. Contrast. I don't really want so much contrast. The brightness is good there. Um, shadows. There's no real shadows to deal with, so it didn't even bother. Um, on effects here. Let's bump up the the contrast a little bit here with a dehaze. I just love dehaze. I mean, sometimes it just really helps out an image. Make it 10 just for fun. And then bringing in the and a vignette. Oh, isn't that nice? No. Don't really like a vignette that looks like that. But when I bring it in like that, and then I bring it back until I can't see it anymore, right? That's at 40. That's a pretty stiff vignette. Let's make it 30. And I think we can live with 30, which is also a fairly, fairly strong vignette. And this brings the vignette to in closer, further out. And I want it, I want it right there. And then feather it helps to make the vignette disappear. You don't want it to disappear, but it, it helps it to, uh, the transition for the vignette to be not so stark. And, hmm, then hit, uh, let's just see. I really think that's about it. Um, just going to go ahead and hit OK on this. And I'm going to see what happens if I apply a photo filter. All right, here's a warm photo filter. And I think I'm done. So you can see here that my composition doesn't look a whole lot different from some of the other compositions that were created for this contest. Um, I really enjoyed uh, doing this contest and seeing uh, what other people did. And the next contest, we're going to use better images. Woo! Um, not that the the girl's image was good. The bunny's the bunny was kind of small. The lamb. You know, the background is just really teeny, and I apologize for that. I realize uh, so the next challenge should be really good. There you have it. If uh, if you liked anything you saw and you learned anything, let me know. If you, if you learned anything, let me know. If it's all the same stuff that you do, uh, let me know that too, all right? If you see that I did something that you said, hey, I know a better way to do it, then go ahead and tell me about it and show me because I want to share that with everybody also. So just let me know, uh, and uh, you can follow my page at Focal Splash or the group at Focal Splash Education. Um, you can follow me on YouTube at Focal Splash also. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.